All right, let's do this. Uh, welcome to another episode. Let's call it an episode. I don't know what YouTube things are on my channel. Anyway, we're just winging it. Anyway, welcome to another video of uh, theory crafting for uh, League 3.7, the Legion League. So I recently decided to convert one of my standard characters to a um, to an elemental hit ranged totem character and found that it was OP as shit. So I was looking at thing, uh, looking at my, uh, my, I guess the next build that I want to play in the new season, and I sort of I played a hierophant and I was like, eh, it's okay, but I wanted something a lot more tanky and something that could sustain a lot more damage, um, a lot e more easily. So what we're looking at here are the DPS stats of a um, of a chieftain variant of the ranged totem. But there's a few things that we have to factor in considering there's some changes coming into the 3.7 which is uh, changing this tree. Uh, one notably being resolute technique uh, which previously in I believe other build guides are looked at for playing range, ranged elemental hit totems for the uh, for the chieftain was a key thing but there's actually something that we can do to get around this and it's something that I figured out early this season with uh, playing a ranger build so you might be thinking if, so basically previously like we're looking at some pretty crazy stats here so yeah, it's not the highest DPS, but definitely it's it's a good DPS. Uh, we're looking at 436,000 DPS for rain elemental uh, range totems for the um, for the uh, chieftain. Now, considering you know this is not uh, min and maxed, and also like we're looking at you know a legacy tomb fist, which is just one of the, one of the items I have sitting in uh in this in the my uh, hierophant build which i've imported in here just to get an idea of what i need um there's definitely better gearing that we can do to push this dps significantly higher but that being said we only really need a few key items uh to make this build work and on top of that we only need to four link to make this build work which is even better that means you don't have to spend all of your currency six linking gear um, the only thing you really be investing in is six linking your bow. But anyway, starting off, pretty much the uh, the key items that we will need, and I'll just drag it onto the screen, is this uh, beautiful little helmet called the Frost Ferno. And basically, um, pardon me, what we'll do is we'll four link this, um, and I'll go through the, the linkages soon. But uh, basically, this is where we're going to sit our ranged attack totem uh, gem as well as our um, elemental hit gem, uh, and we're and then it automatically gives you a socketed uh, so socketed gems are supported by a level thirty um, cold to fire, which is pretty cool. And not to mention your fire and cold gems um, have an additional two levels to each gem as well, and it also gives you sixty percent increased mana regeneration. Which and resist, which is going to be good considering uh, where. Well, actually, I don't. It's not really going to make any difference, matter regeneration, because I'll go into the reason why. But basically, we're going blood magic because we want a lot of health. Um, I should also note that this build is auraless, so we don't need to muck around with mana pools, which is even better. Um, so this is the the first item that we'll need. So th this won't necessarily drop easily. Normally, what you will need is a heat shiver. Uh, which is a very common item in the game, actually. Um, and then what we'll do with the Heat Shiver is we'll do this uh, vision of ice and fire, and we're getting into a bit of a Game of Thrones sort of thing here. But basically, this is a, uh, a quest on the estuary map. So basically, uh, you, you just need to have the um, have the Heat Shiver in your inventory, or, or it's saying here, while holding, but I've heard other notes where... It's uh, in your inventory uh, where you kill the, the Sumter, the Twisted boss of the uh, estuary map. And then basically your Heat Shiver will upgrade into a Frost Ferno and that's pretty much how we do that. Now I would be hard pressed to say these will be very cheap in the League too. So we may get away with like not even a Chaos, maybe an Elk for this because this is not, a, you know, a very big... I, uh, very, I guess not. I wouldn't expect this to be a very expensive prophecy. It's probably a very common prophecy too. Uh, the seal cost is one silver coin, so you know you'll probably find that this will pop up even when you do your prophecy. So, you know, 
pretty easy to get this um, in looking at. So this is the first key item that we'll need. The next thing will be a rain of splinters. Uh, and the reason why this will be a, a, a dual socket that we'll put into our tree. So it basically it reduces our totem damage. Um, we want to try and minimize that to 30%. Um, but it allows each totem that you cast to uh, fire two additional projectiles, which will be pretty well, which is pretty powerful. So it just means you can drop mobs quicker. Um, so this is one other key item. And the, uh, the only other two key items that I would suggest now I think yeah frost ferno uh, splinter rain of splinter and also we'll need two combat focus gems uh, one being and I'll just double check that sorry let's have a look at our, our kit out frost ferno yeah yeah that's pretty much it um, oh and there's there'll be another item too which I'll, I'll go through shortly but Essentially, we'll, we'll also need these combat focus gems. So basically, these um, convert elemental. The, so elemental hit has a probability of hitting in three different elements. So it'll be either cold, lightning, or fire. Basically, we want to do 100% fire damage. So in this case, I believe we don't want to... Uh, we don't want the blue gem. We just want the red and the green. So we were, or sorry, jewel. So we just want the red and the green jewel. Now these are very cheap as well. They're probably going to be like one chaos or, or whatnot at the start of the league, uh, which is pretty good. So already, you know, we're looking at a four, uh, a four link, four socketed linked um, build setup with two jewel, three jewels that we need that are very cheap to get. So you know, we may only be looking at you know somewhere in the vicinity of five chaos just to get started. And finally, the last thing we'll need will be a, uh, a skirmish two-point arrow quiver. And the reason why we need that, not only if we were using mana, um, it would be ideal, but um, attack skills have plus one maximum number of summon totems. Now, you can get shields like the Tokohama's Fortress and things like that that will do the same thing. But because we're using a bow in this build, you can't apply a shield and a bow, bow together. So the skirmish will be the only item that will work with this. And that'll get us from two totems to three totems, which will uh, you know, add another layer of damage to what we're doing. Um, so those are pretty much, I guess, the five items that we will need. And I'll put this uh, in, in the, in the um, description as well as the five key items. I'll, I'll write those down too. Um, but basically, it's it's a four link uh, four link build with five very cheap key items, and this is a very common item too. So for such a powerful build, it's very easy. Um, the other thing that we'll need to use because there have been some changes to the um, to the actual skill tree. So basically, there in in the three point seven update, glancing blow will now exist um, where previously we used to use resolute technique, which meant your hits can't be evaded. So we won't be able to use this node, but there's a workaround for this, which, uh, I've, which I was talking about just earlier. And that's basically using the lion's eye glare imperial bow. So if I pull that up on here, basically it's this big kick ass looking bow. So it allows far shot and it also has an attribute, which means heart hits can can't be evaded now so far i haven't seen any notes or any updates saying that this has been stripped off this bow which means this essentially uh takes the place of the um of the resolute technique note and in even even in a better way because resolute technique used to uh remove your ability to uh, deal critical strikes so basically you'll be able to do critical strikes as well as always hitting every enemy that's in front of your totems and that's quite powerful. So that's pretty much the workaround. Previous to this, I believe quill reins were used, um, and also chin soles. But I actually found the um, the when I did my spec up in in my path of building that lines eye glare was the best item to use and yielded the best damage. So at this point, I would say to make this build work in the next league it, that will be pretty much the only way to do that effectively like yeah, there are other items and, and you know and you know dealing in crafting bows and whatnot you might be able to get around that but for now this is pretty much the easiest way to do it through uniques and a lionized glare is incredibly cheap as well so 
you know, it might be 10 chaos at the start of the league or whatnot. So, you know, and it actually has a, has, is one of the few bows that gets close to 2.0 um, attacks per second without being crazy like the Quill Rain and not doing any DPS whatsoever. So essentially those are the, the five, five or six key items that we'll need to start this build out. Now, obviously, when we get further down into, into the details of, um, of, of fleshing this build out, a few other items that we'll end up getting as our end game build will be Kaom's Heart. Um, gloves, I would be using Grip Gloves because they give you projectile damage. Um, Tomb Fist is not going to be viable. Um, as I said, this is just an example build. Um, we're going to need the Gang's Momentum. I believe I have not pulled this up. Um, the Gang's Momentum Boots, again, very, very cheap and very common item, but we need that 39% increased damage against ignited enemies because basically with this build, we want to 100% ignite all enemies. And I'll explain the reason why we'll be able to do that very shortly, but there's also some changes to the Chieftain Tree which work in our favor. Um, the next thing is Yoke of Suffering. So the reason why we'll use Yoke of Suffering, and this is probably going to be one of the more expensive items in, in, the, in the next league, uh, will pretty much be because not only does it give us across the board resistances, it also gives us um, elemental damage with the ability to shock. Now that doesn't matter what type of elemental damage that um, you do. Uh, because we're converting everything to fire, your fire damage will shock enemies. And the flip side of that, because your fire damage shocks, shocked enemies take increased damage. So that means essentially your um, your shock your, your your shocked enemies from your fire damage will take even more damage. So that's going to pretty much push your uh, push your DPS up even further and and let you clean up enemies even quicker. Um, which is one of the more expensive items on this build, like I said, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, rings on this build will essentially just be, you know, you can use opal rings. I was actually playing around with using Venter's Gambles um, for magic fine building. Uh, your belt is just gonna be an all resist belt with health and, uh, and if you can get one with um, elemental damage, that's an even, even bigger plus. Uh, another item that we'll also need will be a Watcher's Eye. Um, and because actually we won't be using uh, Watch's Eye, so you can use a Watch's Eye if, if you decide to use Auras and not run an all health build. But in this case, it's not really going to be beneficial to us to use a Watch's Eye. Um, we can we can switch that out for a um, for a, a something that does damage, jewel that does damage, or uh, or something of the likes, um, or a murderous eye, or something like that. Um, so that's pretty much the, I guess, a very quick rundown of the gearing. There'll be more details in my path of building um, as to the gearing that you'll need to use, but essentially it's just the five key items to start with. Now, looking at the tree itself, oh, sorry, if we look at the skills, let's look at the skills. Uh, so pretty much in, in our uh, Frostferno, we're going to use Elemental Hit, Combustion, Ranged Attack Totem, Elemental Damage with Attacks. That's pretty much all we need to all we need to use. So one of the beauty, um, beautiful things about elemental hit, is it basically scales off of um, off of uh, gems, which means the better the gems you put in, the more DPS it'll do. And because your helmet is giving you a level thirty gem equivalent, uh, it's going to scale heavily. And the other benefit of elemental hit is because it's both a fire and a cold gem. If we have a look at our, our Frostferno again, it adds plus two levels to fire and plus two levels to cold gems. Now that actually becomes a plus four on your elemental hit gem. So getting level 20 means you actually get to level 24. Uh, combustion gets an extra two points uh, and obviously your other two gems get jack shit. Uh, on the side of that, we'll obviously be running, you know, your usual um, uh, Immortal Call survivability sort of thing. Uh, in the case of the new um, the new skills that are coming out, we'll probably use Iron Skin as well. Um, so we'll have uh, Castman Damage taken and have Immortal Call and Iron Skin alternating. Um, I always run Phase Run as well, um, like a level one or two Phase Run gem, just in case to keep you going. Uh, and that will actually be your movement skill in this build as well. So you'll be running phase run as your movement skill. Now, as far as your um, your actual you know 
procking, um, uh, I guess, um, procking curses and whatnot with this build. Obviously, because we're going to, going to be using the, um, I believe it's called the uh, Ancestral Bond node, we can't deal direct damage, but we still have a bow. So basically, uh, in, in our bow or within our build, we're going to also do a, uh, a four link job with uh, Frenzy, Greater Multiple Projectiles, Curse on Hit, and Flammability. And what this will do is essentially we won't level up the Frenzy gem or the Greater, greater Multiple Projectiles gem because it'll create a problem uh, with bottlenecking Dex, and Dex is going to be an issue with this build. But essentially, what we'll do is we'll shoot enemies as we run around and drop totems. Um, and having greater, greater multiple projectiles will allow us to shoot more enemies and that in turn will give us frenzy charges which will speed our totems up um, and will also curse enemies on hit and proc them with a flammability curse which will make them more susceptible to um, to fire damage so it'll drop their, uh, their resistances by 44% based on the level 20 gem without any changes to the, um, to the quality of that gem. So basically, uh, it will allow our totems to do a uh, shitload more damage, which is pretty much the goal of the game at the end of the day. Um, so that's pretty much the gems, very simple. So basically, we're just looking at the totem, the, the four totem gems, the um, you know survivability uh, kit out and movement kit out, and, uh, and basically the, uh, the curse on hit. Essentially, we don't need any six link gear. We can do all of this with four link gear very easily. Um, and with all the existing gear that I've already stated. Uh, so when looking at the tree, I have sort of went back and had a hash through another build guide and fleshed it out to try and see if I could make this work uh, as efficiently as I could. Uh, note the total health pool for this build currently gets up to about 6,777 health based on the gearing. Now it's probably very easy to push that even further uh, with better gear than what's sitting in this but essentially I'm forecasting based off that tree the, the items and skills that I've got specula speculatively um, put in here in Path of Building we're going to get, we're going to get 436,000 DPS um, that's buffed so um, essentially yeah we should we should be pretty okay um, yeah so anyway, uh, that includes you know a, a relatively huge health pool, and also remembering Chieftain has an ascendancy which lets our totems leech one percent of damage um, back. So one percent of the forty-three thousand, uh, four hundred thirty-six thousand uh, damage that we're going to be issuing to enemies is going to be leached back to us across in our health pool. So, and we're also going to have regeneration too, which is going to make us pretty good at surviving most things and heavy hits from bigger bosses so I would say I guess once fleshing this out a little bit more and uh, doing a little bit more work around this this is going to be at a clear end game and uber uber elder very easily uh, I reckon we can probably push this up to about a million 1.5 million dps with the right gearing um, so just looking back at the tree I've done a bit of tweaking to um, to some of the other guides that I've seen just to factor in the fact that we can't use resolute technique anymore um, and I'll go into the details around the ascendancy once we go through this. But essentially, we're just going to follow the uh, the standard build for a Marauder. Uh, pick up this Warrior's Blood. We'll pick up this, these Dex nodes early. Um, we'll come up to Strength. Now, we won't collect this straight away. We're pretty much going to rush our way up to uh, Ancestral Bond. Uh, so we can grab that. And then basically, um, so once we get to Ancestral Bond, we're going to want to pick up Spiritual Aid. Um, this basically converts any minion damage increases or, or procs that affect minions to basically directly impact on us which will in in return impact on our totems uh, we're also going to pick up this divine judgment node and start moving across pick up this um, this dual socket here this gives us some int as well uh, then we want to move to devotion pick up divine fervor uh, we also want to pick up um, Holy Dominion. Uh, we want to move across, pick up Discipline and Training, go up to Retribution and pick up Precision, which will give us another 20 decks to deal with our deficiency. Um, then basically we're going to want to move all the way down here uh, and, pick, and basically get down to Juggernaut. And we want to pick up Blood Magic and Mortal Conviction. So this will get rid of our mana pooling 
and we'll turn us to a blood magic build um, and we'll hugely, hugely increase our mana pool. Now we could use very, very um, low pooling auras, like things that are like 15%, but we might need to run enlightenment jewels to do that. But you know, up to your discretion, if you want to do that, you can do that. Uh, we'll pick up Ironwood, that will just buff our, our totems up even further and give them more resistance to damage so they don't disappear quickly. And then we'll go down to Lava Lash and pick up the um, the damage with our weapons penetration and whatnot. Um, so moving back up here, uh, we'll come back up uh, past Ancestral Bond, we'll pick up Avatar of Fire, uh, we'll pick up this dual socket cluster here. Uh, this is not critical but you know the more dual sockets the the better you can get these whispering um or sorry murderous eye jewels in there we'll come down pick up cruel prepara preparation and then we'll pick up heart of the flame which will just basically give us more fire penetration at the end of the day and more fire damage and more fire damage is good because this is a fire build so once we've done that we'll come back in we'll pick up these uh these health clusters down for uh constitution uh, Berserking will pick up uh, totemic, uh, totemic Zeal, which lets us place totems quicker. And we're going to pick up this little node down here now. No, again, not vital, but, you know, uh, more more uh, more dual sockets are better. Um, and obviously within our dual sockets, we'll have Rain of Splinters. Um, we'll have one with our Watcher's Eye, if we so choose to use a Watcher's Eye. Uh, one with our uh, combat focus crimson jewel and another one with our other combat focus crimson jewel um, yeah that's pretty much the uh, the spec out for the tree I'll put this in the the POB paste bin in the in the description in the in the, uh, in the description um, and that's pretty much all there is to building this I wouldn't deviate too much off of how this is built um, I had a play around with uh with trying to pick up other nodes and whatnot and you know you can play around and get a lot more health out of this build and whatnot just depends on what you want to do with it and how your play style is um i found you know 6777 health is is a pretty good pool so um yeah anyway um on the side of that we also have to look at some of the changes to the chieftain ascendancy now this is the uh the chieftain ascendancy changes what I actually noticed is in looking at the ascendancies, and by the way, the ascendancies previously would have, we would have taken would have been Moon's pre Presence. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that first name there. Uh, Tokahama's War, War's Herald. Um, it was a, a Nagamu's Flame Advance and, uh, and Hinakora's Death Fury. But it appears that they have done some changes to the chieftain to make it a little bit more i guess lucrative for the new season league whatever we want to call it so looking at the uh the notes here i would be picking up node five and six um which is again tokohama's wars herald it just basically looks like they've moved some stuff around between the nodes I think this gives you a 50% increased effect of buffs granted by your active um, ancestor totems. Um, they also have a 100% increased activation range and 25% increased area of effect while you have totems. So basically they, they, they hit enemies a lot earlier than what they used to hit. Now the big plus side about that is obviously they do that, but they don't taunt enemies anymore, which is something that I noticed um, they used to be able yeah there we go they used to be able to have a 20 percent chance to taunt on uh, on hit and reflect damage which they no longer do so that's five and six the next one you'll want is nine and ten now i don't think they have a nine in here i couldn't see it but ten is basically moon's presence so that's just a totems are immune to fire damage and they've shifted that from um from where did they shift that from yeah, they shifted that from Tokohama's Wars Herald um, onto item 10, which is Moon's Presence. So you'll need that. Uh, the other thing I noticed is we'll probably need 17 and 16. Um, and that will uh, convert 50% of physical damage converted to fire damage. And every 10 seconds, you'll gain 100% of physical damage as extra fire, fire damage. So any physical damage that we're stacking off our bow and we will stack physical damage um, off a lion's eye glare i'll just drag the lion's eye glare because it can go up to 324.5 dps on the bow itself 
So that will give us an increase to our fire damage every 10 seconds. I would expect to see a, uh, a huge explosion of uh, bosses and mob bosses and whatnot, which is pretty cool. Um, the last two nodes that we'll need, because we have to allocate uh, four lots of lab points out, uh, will be 11 and 12, which is, uh, I believe, maybe a new node. I'm too sure. It's been redone. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So 11 and 12 we can, we can use. Um, and that will basically give us uh, increased fire damage, health regen, um, and, oh sorry uh, yep and it will also give us 25% chance to ignite more burning damage and 15% fire penetration which is going to increase our damage significantly on enemies and that's what we want to do um, so uh, <clears throat> based off these new nodes uh, this is pretty much what we'll be using um, yeah th th those so 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 17 and 16 on, on here will be what we'll be using in the new season, which will basically replace the, um, the, the nodes that I've got selected on the POB. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers off on the build. Like I said, I've had to do a bit of tweaking in this, um, and I'll put the key items in the descriptions, but so far looking at it, I've got it running up to about 436,000 DPS. Uh, just looking at the configurations, we won't actually have Onslaught, um, so we'll take that off. So uh, there we go, 393,000 DPS, uh, which is about 4, 400,000 rounded. Now, it's not min and maxed, and there's a lot of stuff that can be done. We're uh, still not talking about uh, things like corrupting items. So I would say for the, uh, for the skirmish quiver, I would actually corrupt this so that it gets a point blank proc, and that will give you 50% increased damage for, uh, for essentially enemies that are hit first up by um, by arrow abilities or arrow skills or archery skills such as elemental hit so that'll further push your damage up at the early end or early end of the damage scale um, also obviously the chance to hit is 100 um, percent yeah that's all there is to it it's uh it's quite a powerful build for what it is it's a really cool build. I've had a lot of fun playing uh, this build with a Hierophant, so I'm pretty keen to play this with a uh, with a Marauder. Uh, with a Marauder. Um, so yeah, if uh, if this was informative, um, then please like and sub. I actually really enjoy doing content where I'm explaining mechanics and whatnot, and then you know we're doing theory crafting. So if you want me to have a look at other builds and see, you know, have a look at the I guess the notes and some of the details that are coming through in the current season, I'm happy to do that. Uh, there might also be some new items that are coming into the game in the new season that, or the new league that will boost this even further. Um, but I'm pretty confident that, yeah, as it stands, this is you know a good starting base. Obviously, we would get a modification on our helm for elemental hit as well, um, and anything that increases chaining um, would be even better. So if element elemental hit has a chain a, a chain increase, that would be even better. Uh, more arrows are better um, but yeah if uh, if you like this content like and sub and uh, thanks a lot for watching All right bye